Hi there, this is the Real Turkey channel, dear YouTubers, and I'm your presenter Attila Yeshilada. I'm just gonna, you know, shoot the bull for a few seconds because I'm working with this new studio uh, thingy dingy and I am not so sure whether this is recording. It seems to be recording and I have placed my faith in God that it does so. Today we're gonna talk about the Libyan civil war and you may wonder why a YouTube channel that's primarily dedicated to Turkey is talking about the Libyan civil war. Well, let me tell you a personal story. I have been in the business of commenting and analyzing Turkey's economic and political affairs for 30 years now. I've changed several psychiatrists and take heavy sedatives just not to shoot my neighbors. Over the years, the job has gotten very difficult. Take the current days as an example. It's not that I need to cover Turkish economy and politics. I also need to go back to my medical school notes to learn about coronaviruses and their effects on people who are infected. I have never gone to medical school, by the way. I have visited medical schools for surgeries, but I have not been enrolled as a student. Um, Secondly, Turkey is now everywhere. It is campaigning against terror organization PKK in northern Iraq. It has occupied several border zones in Syria uh, to force Assad into a peace agreement that would ensure the safe return of 4 million Syrian refugees in Turkey. Turkey is also in Libya, which means that Poor Attila Yeshilara has to study the Syrian war, uh, the Iraqi political dynamics, uh, as well as, you know, what the heck is going on in Libya. What uh, compelled me to shoot this video is a sudden outburst uh, by Egypt's president, Mr. Uh, Abdel Fattah Sisi, and I apologize to my Arab friends if I'm mispronouncing the gentleman's name, who... Uh, instructed uh, his army to be ready to intervene in Libya. Uh, he seems to be angry that the pro-Turkish national government of accord forces who are currently have the upper hand against General Haftar are advancing towards cities called Sirte and an air base down south in the desert called Al Jufra. Uh, everyone is in Libya, not only Egypt, United Arab Emirates, uh, Turkey, Russia, several EU countries, diplomatically speaking, and everyone in, in North Africa, in the Sahara region, uh, who is a mercenary and who wants new people to kill. So it has become incumbent upon me uh, to explain what's going on in Libya. Of course, this is the Turkish perspective. I mean, as independent as I'm trying to be, after all, I am in Istanbul right now. Uh, and uh, speculate on the potential endgame. So here we go. And this new studio, it's great. It allows me to come up with a summary of what I'm going to say. And here it is. I hope it shows on the screen. First of all, we're going to look at the actors, then the sudden outburst by Mr. Sisi, and finally we're going to move on to Turkey, uh, explain Turkey's motivations, both open and concealed for being in Libya, and answer the question briefly whether the, pos whether the clashes between Egyptian military and pro-Turkey forces are a possibility. It gets bizarre, believe me, it's one of the most difficult videos I'm going to shoot in my life, I hope to God. How is the Turkish-Russian relationship tied to Libya? And indirectly, of course, the Turkish-American relationship is tied to Libya. And of course, the last question is I'm going to speculate about the end game. Let me bring up another scene to show you what's going on. Uh, this is from Al Jazeera. I hope they won't sue me for using one of their charts. Uh, you see a green and sort of a yellow 
uh, areas. The green area is controlled by the Turkey-supported National Government of Accord, which is the UN-recognized government, but a lot of EU, EU nations and Western nations don't actually support NGA because it's believed to be deeply affiliated with Muslim Brotherhood. The United States may argue that Muslim Brotherhood is a terror organization. In my view, it isn't. It is a clandestine liberation and political movement that unfortunately has some terrorist elements attached to it. It has been very active in Egypt when uh, Mr. Mursi was president, who is deposed by Mr. Sisi, and Mr. Sisi kicked out all Muslim Brotherhood members and, you know, put the rest in prison. So they are currently uh, nestled in Turkey because Turkey is also a support. Well, I shouldn't say Turkey. I should say Mr. Erdogan is a supporter of Muslim Brotherhood. The yellow area belongs to the rebel government or the opposing government of General Haftar which does have some claim to legitimacy because, if I understand it correctly, while the, the national government is in Tripoli, the assembly has migrated outside and has taken sides with Al Haftar. <laughs> now, not Al Haftar, General Haftar or Marshal Haftar or Haftir, I don't know how it is pronounced. Now, General Haftar was about to win this war. Uh, I can't use my pointer on the studio, or maybe I can if you see it. He has uh, occupied most of these green areas and, in fact, laid siege to Tripoli, and his forces has entered some outer skirts of Tripoli. That's when Turkey decided to get involved, for reasons I will explain later. Uh, but it made a difference. There are even though this is denied by Turkey and people who say this are usually, um, you know, tried and convicted of uh, uh, disclosing military secrets. Uh, but it's a well-known fact that Turkish special forces are both at the front against General Haftar and also advising the NGA military. If that's not enough, Turkey has sent... Uh, its allies, uh, some of the Syrian rebels, or you can call them jihadist, uh, jihadists to Libya to fight on the side of national government of accord. As well, uh, it has sent several naval vessels to pressure General Haftar uh, from the seaside to defend Tripoli via its uh, missiles. And finally, what I think or what the international experts believe has made the difference uh, is that uh, Turkey has developed a relatively sophisticated military drone strategy, both for surveillance and bombing purposes, which have trumped uh, the Haftar's drones, which are largely donated by United Arab Emirates uh, and made in China. So thanks to air superiority, and the sheer number of new jihadis coming from Syria, the national government of Accord, uh, Mr. Saraj is the prime minister, I believe, has rolled back the Haftar advance and captured several bases. Let's just look at these. Uh, Misrata, as far as I know, is an extremely important city, and Al Watiya Air Base. Uh, has also been liberated, if that's the correct word. Now, Turkey is encouraging uh, Al Saraj, the head of the National, U Gov National Government of Accord, to advance on Sirte. And if you look down at the map towards the bottom of the screen, you will see the Jufra or Al Jufra Air Base, which is also a very important strategic location or military outpost. Now, Turkey said that there shall be no ceasefire or uh, peace negotiations before uh, uh, General Haftar pulls out of Sirte and Jufra Air Base. He is not. He is currently uh, being aided by Russian uh, mercenaries called the Wagner Group, Apparently, Russia has moved 
some old MiG jet fighters, though they seem to be for defensive purposes rather than attacking uh, the Turkish forces. And this is what made Mr. Sisi extremely angry. For reasons that are not quite clear to me, except that he wants to retain the Egyptian influence on Libya, he objects to pro-Turkish forces capturing Sirte and Jufra Air Base. And he said, if necessary, he will send in the military to stop them. Now, uh, of course, uh, Egypt is not the only country that's involved in the Libyan war. As I've said, Russia is in there, Turkey is in there, United Arab Emirates and Italy and France with you know, diplomatic purposes. Why? Two reasons. A, Libya is very rich in hydrocarbons. Uh, and obviously, whichever government uh, wins, it's going to reward its supporters by some contracts or concessions to search and develop uh, oil fields. Secondly, I don't think this um, map shows it very clearly, but uh, towards the north, towards the top of the map, lies the European continent, that is EU. And as you see, Libya is a critical passage uh, that controls the migration and energy routes to EU. So whoever controls the Libya or the Libyan government is going to have more of a say in EU affairs. Let's go back to our scene two to see what else am I missing. Uh, why is Turkey in Libya? Well, as I've said, Mr. Erdogan has a strong affinity with the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, he thinks that Muslim Brotherhood in the Sunni Arab world and Hamas are his venues to reach the Arab street and to increase his influence and popularity among Muslim Arabs. As you might remember, Mr. Erdogan has pretensions to become the Sunni world leader. Uh, that's one of the reasons. The second reason <laughs> is complicated, but it's worth explaining. Turkey and Libya have signed a naval agreement to split the Mediterranean Sea between them called an Exclusive Economic Zone Agreement. These are UN authorized agreements as long as two countries uh, agree and there is no third country in between. They could divide up the sea as they wish, uh, meaning that you know, both fishing rights and whatever resources are underneath the sea, such as oil, gas, diamonds, I don't know, uh, can be divided as per this agreement. And this agreement is very crucial to Turkey because otherwise, in eastern Mediterranean, it will be locked up to its very own shoreline and will have no access to the Aegean or Mediterranean seas. To see why this is the case, let me go to another uh, map here. This is a poorly reproduced map that I took from Google, uh, which shows the division of Eastern Mediterranean between Greece Egypt, Israel, and Turkey. The uh, dotted lines are what Greece, Egypt, and Israel are claiming to be their own exclusive economic zones, and they have indeed reached an agreement on that. As you see, according to this map, Turkey has almost no access to the Mediterranean, and <laughs> if you would look carefully, the Greek uh, continental shelf actually exceeds the Turkish shoreline and goes inside Turkish cities. That's because it, even though it's not shown on this map, the Aegean Sea is full of thousands of tiny islands, 99.9% .9 of which belong to Greece. May they keep them forever. 
it's a great location where I would like to visit. You know, Midilli, uh, Crete, all these islands. But the problem is, Greece claims that these islands have their own economic exclusive zones or their, you know, continental borders. But they are like within two or three miles of Turkey. Um, if any of you have visited the Aegean areas of Turkey for, you know, touristic purposes, in any beach resort, you would look across the horizon and you would see islands, they belong to Greece. <laughs> so, if Turkey were to permit Greece uh, to claim continental shelves for these islands, it really has no navigation rights in, in Aegean. Now, the situation has been exacerbated when, uh, as I've said, Greece, Greek Cypriot administration, which is the UN uh, recognized government of Cyprus, but it doesn't represent the Turkish minority, Egypt and Israel formed a consortium to build a natural gas pipeline from Egypt and Israel offshore fields to Cyprus, which also has some offshore deposits, and then onto the Greek island of uh, Crete, and then onto Italy. Uh, now, of course, at current prices, LNG prices or NG prices, such a pipeline doesn't make sense. But that's besides the point for Mediterraneans who happens to be very hot-headed. As far as Turkey goes, that pipeline is sort of uh, the death warrant for Turkey because its capacity to sell gas from Russia or from Azerbaijan and potentially in the future from Iraqi Kurdistan would be hampered or would be stopped by the gas flowing this Eastern Mediterranean pipeline. So what did Turkey do? Turkey signed, as I've said, an exclusive economic zone agreement with Libya according to which the continental shelf is divided as follows. You see now Turkey has very broad access to Eastern Mediterranean, as well as it connects to Libya's continental shelf, and it neatly intersects the proposed East Med NG pipeline, which means that unless Turkey and Libya give written permission to the consortium of Egypt, Greek Cypriot administration, Israel and Greece, this pipeline cannot be built. So in one fell swoop, Turkey not only increased its influence on Libya, it also stopped uh, the proposed pipeline. Of course, I don't think the UN or the La Hague uh, uh, Court of Justice have made a decision on that. Of course, uh, the Greek, Egypt, Israel axis claim that this continental zone is completely illegitimate uh, and it simply cannot be recognized internationally. Uh, but that's besides the point. You know from football that, you know, possession is 90% of winning the game. If the national government of, of accord wins in Libya, the treaty between Libya and Turkey stands and there is really no military force or international pressure that would force Turkey to give up its rights to Eastern Mediterranean. Of course, there are more mundane uh, reasons involved in Turkey's presence in Libya, which is that Turkey wants to establish permanent military bases, does, you know, reflecting its military power to the entire Mediterranean. And uh, it claims that the government of national accord has already granted it uh, rights to seek oil, natural gas, whatever, and that uh, it will have the leading role in the reconstruction of Libya, which means, you know, if the war ends and Libya's oil fields are on again, operating and producing, uh, Libya will have billions of revenues, a good portion of which will go to reconstruction and Turkey will get the lion's share. 
That's also the reason why Russians are in there and why no one else wants Turkey to be in there. Okay. This is essentially the situation. Uh, let's look at the question of are military clashes possible between Turkey and Egypt? In my view, you know, you can never rule out this kind of thing, but uh, it's very difficult as the pharaohs of Egypt had discovered millions of years ago. And let me show you the map again. Uh, look to the right of the yellow area. That I believe is Algeria. Uh, no, this is Egypt. I'm sorry. This is Egypt. This is Egypt. Uh, and uh, this 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 white area is really not occupied. It's desert. Most of Egypt is populated across the Nile River, and I presume that's where their army is. And uh, Mr. Uh, Sisi has a very tough uh, task in his hands if he's going to march his army uh, from, you know, whether they're in Alexandria uh, or any other city, I don't know, all the way to Sirte and Jafra Air Base. Egypt does have a navy, but this is a personal opinion, of course. I think uh, Turkish navy uh, is superior to, to the Egyptian navy. Uh, Rommel made the same mistake of fighting a tank war against the Allies in the desert. He lost badly because he ran out of oil, gas, I mean. Uh, and I think the same dilemma will face both Turkey and Egypt if they wish to fight on land, that it is extremely expensive, exhausting, and building and maintaining a supply line to the front lines is almost impossible. Uh, also, both countries are suffering deeply from uh, the COVID-19 epidemics and sort of short of uh, financial resources to fight prolonged wars. So I think Egypt is bluffing and there are not going to be any military clashes in Libya. This brings us to the final question of what will be the end game. Well, it depends on Russians. Russia has slowed down Turkey's advance in Syria by help, helping Assad's air force to bomb uh, Turkish military forces as well as uh, Turkey's proxies, the jihadis, in Idlib. It could do the same in uh, Libya by using its MiG jet fighters to bomb pro-Turkey forces and help General Haftar to roll them back. But in my view, that's also a very costly exercise for Russia. I believe Russia's first prerogative would be to cut a deal with Turkey so that they share Libya equitably, equitably, of course, defined by Mr. Putin's viewpoint. Uh, and uh, both of them use Libya as a launching pad to put further pressure on EU. Uh, I think this is the most likely scenario. Turkey would not want to fight the Russian Air Force or Russian forces in Libya. But Russia would not want to force, want to push Turkey too far because it has vast economic interests in Turkey. And also it needs Turkey's cooperation in Syria to end that damn war over there, which has cost half a million lives and most of Syrians are refugees. This is the most likely scenario. The second likely scenario is Russians, for one reason or other, deciding that the cost of uh, intervening in Libya is too high, in which case the Turkish side will win. By win, let me go back to this map again. By win, I don't mean to say that the national government of Accord will capture all of these yellow areas. There are tribal differences involved. Um, the people in these yellow areas are not exactly keen on the Islamist origins of Mr. al Saraj and, and what he intends to do with Libya. But I think uh, Mr. Saraj can force General Haftar 
to come to the peace table uh, and to recognize the legitimacy of the El Sarraj government in return probably for a sinecure job or some of the economic spoils. And in that outcome, the most likely precondition for a peace deal by the NGA is Mr. Haftar recognizing the exclusive economic zone treaty between Libya and Turkey. This is not going to happen overnight. I think uh, there will be a lot more bloodshed in Libya. There are other complications. I mean, if Trump is not reelected and Biden replaces him uh, currently, uh, Trump's benign neglect policy in Libya could change. EU could impose sanctions on Turkey for violating the arms embargo, etc., etc. But I think uh, at the end, let's say within a year or so, Turkey would achieve most of its military and economic objectives in, 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 in Libya. Again, before I close, I must say that I am really not a supporter or a fan of AKP, and I make no claim that Turkey's position in Libya is just. I shall defend Turkey's position, military position and posture in a different video. I am merely trying to present and analyze the facts as an independent observer. I hope I have succeeded. If you like this video, please share it with your friends or anyone else who is doing business in Turkey or studying Turkey for academic reasons. Black lives matter. In fact, all lives matter. I wish we would stop killing each other. Have a healthy day. Bye-bye. This was Afilaya Shalada from Real Turkey Channel.